So I had to get a COVID test. There's fun and learning around the bend. You could even do it with your best friend. If there's science stuff that you like to know, come watch Allie and Coco Science Show. Don't worry, I don't have COVID for now, but I do want to give a quick shout out to my dad for giving me the big schnoz jean or jeans. I don't actually know how many jeans are responsible for the size and shape of your nose or if I broke my nose six times while playing as a kid. But I want to thank my dad for the big nose because I have a phobia of foreign objects entering my body. I have a huge needle thing, really anything. I was freaking out when I found out I had to get a COVID test, freaking out for weeks. And when I finally got it done, I just closed my eyes, I said, just do it. And I didn't even feel it. So, <laughs> thank you, Dad. Yeah, your nose is beautiful. But here's the thing, I was lucky enough to have the resource to get tested. I only have to have one test to return to work, which means I got tested like a month ago and I could have picked up COVID by now and taken it to the office. Yeah. While testing has definitely increased since the beginning of the pandemic, the CDC has rolled back quite a few of the guidelines for who can and should get tested um, because of pressures from the Trump administration. It's completely ridiculous in a pandemic, Colette. Like, you know, you're smart. So we need to have more testing and faster testing. And I know they've been developing like some really cool tests where you can test with saliva and then you get your results back in 15 or 30 minutes. And that is awesome. But we need to have it spread out over the whole country and do it frequently, not just once, because one test is not enough. And the schools are opening back up. Thank you, Colette. Kids can definitely get the coronavirus and they can definitely pass it to their family members at home or to teachers and staff at the schools. So I think opening up is a big issue and we're definitely gonna see another spike. We've already seen it with colleges opening back up and as far as K through 12 goes, there are schools in other countries that have seen a spike in the schools of coronavirus, even for young kids. Now research has shown that our slow start to contain the virus or believe that it even exists, lack of testing, opening back up too early, as well as lack of action and leadership now <laughs> has prolonged the existence of this virus in our country. Some countries have already opened up and it's believed that we're gonna be kind of dealing with this for the next 18 to 24 months. Yeah, that's um, that's two human years, if you do the math correctly. And we can't just wait around for a vaccine, guys, because vaccines take time to make, make sure they're safe, and distribute. If we can't have increased testing and contact tracing, the best we can do is wear masks and stay away from each other and to keep washing your hands. And a lot of the delay in stopping the spread of the virus is because of these. I know, it's controversial for some reason, Colette. I don't know either. According to the most recent Pew Research poll that I could find, about 85% of Americans are reporting that they're wearing a mask at least most of the time. And that's a lot better than at the beginning of the pandemic, that's for sure. But there seems to be many conspiracies floating around masks and improper mask use. So today I wanna to tell you how to wear a mask and go over some conspiracies that you guys sent in. All right, let's talk about wearing a mask. So you've decided to do the responsible thing and wear a mask. That's awesome, but we need to make sure we're wearing the mask right or they're not gonna do anything. So whether that puppy goes on your ears or around your head, you need to make sure you're covering from your chin to your to your nose. Uh, I'm, I see this, I see this all the time at the grocery store and I understand that you can breathe better. But if your nose is out in the open, it's not actually containing the virus. Someone could still sneeze and get COVID all over you. And I really hope that the people doing this is not included in the 85%, but I'm pretty sure it is just based on what I'm seeing in my smaller sample of the target in my hometown. So over the nose it goes. And now it's so good, right? Now, 
I prefer the double cloth layer masks because they're reusable. I can wash them in case I get dog hair on them. Yeah, if I didn't put this on you, I probably wouldn't be picking dog hair out of my mask. But I prefer these because they're reusable and they're cute. I think these are, are these cute? Yeah, they're cute. But there are tons of other options out there that might fit your lifestyle better. And that's awesome. You just need to make sure they're approved. I'm going to leave a link down in the description on what are approved masks. Another option is a disposable mask. If you do use them, make sure you cut both of your loops so that animals don't get it caught around them. And you're actually throwing this in a trash can. I am very tired of seeing these in the grocery store parking lot. I also see these masks um, given out a lot. It's like a sporty fabric and you can breathe a lot easier. You can see me breathing. Look, you know why? Because air passes right through. We don't want these masks. So make sure you can't have air pass through. All right guys, so we are on part two of this video. Mask conspiracies. I asked you guys on my social media, what are some conspiracies you've heard about masks? Number one, you're breathing in carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide when you wear a mask, so you're poisoning yourself. And I've heard both the carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. We don't breathe out carbon monoxide at all, so no worries there. Also, the mask still allows you to breathe. This is why doctors can do like, 15 hour surgeries without having to take a mask break. If you were wheeled into the hospital to have an operation and you knew that your doctor was taking their mask off every five minutes to breathe, you probably wouldn't feel comfortable having your organs out with the doctor breathing their breath over your body. I understand people have different like health issues that kind of make it harder to breathe, but just know you're not gonna get poisoned this way. <laughs> Also, there are so many videos out there where they show that your oxygen levels do not go down no matter how big of a mask you're wearing. One guy even put like eight masks on and he could still have the same amount of oxygen levels as normal without a mask. So this just further supports that these masks aren't cutting your oxygen levels and you're not breathing in your CO2. And I know in hot areas, humid areas, it can be really hard to breathe. So if you do need to take a break, go like far away from someone and you know take a quick deep breath and then get right back to your grocery shopping but do not grocery shop like this and don't talk like this either number two when you wear a mask and you have the coronavirus and you breathe out your covid into your mask and then breathe it back in you're gonna get sicker now the point of the mask is to make sure that you if you have coronavirus you're not spreading it out into the community I like to think, I mean, our bodies are a system. And if we put a mask on, we've closed the system up. And so we're not spreading anything out, but we're kind of keeping everything contained in this system. So if you breathe out of your mouth hole and breathe it back in, you're not gonna get sicker. You've already got the virus in you. This is the time to wear a mask to make sure other people are safe. Number three. You can get pneumonia or a fungal infection uh, because your mask gets wet and you breathe in the bacteria. Now, I've heard of mask knee, and you can see I'm, I'm getting acne from wearing a mask. I try and just be really careful. I've gotta stop touching my face. Make sure you're changing your masks out often and getting plenty of clean masks, washing your mask regularly, etc. As far as a wet mask giving you a fungal infection or bacteria or pneumonia or any of those things, um, that's actually been debunked, so I'll leave links for all these in the description. Doctors and researchers have basically backed it up that this is a false claim that had been spreading around on Facebook, like a virus. However, you do want to change out a wet mask because it can be unsanitary. It could have come from an outside source and you don't want someone's wet germs on your mask. Uh, so you do want to change them out if your mask does get wet. And to add to that, I have a friend who teaches younglings. She's telling me that all the kids' masks are completely drenched because they're licking their mouths from the inside to the outside, which is completely unsanitary and also completely disgusting. So if somebody out there who's great with materials could invent a mask that has pipe cleaners, kind of like a horse's feed bag, to keep, make sure kids aren't licking their masks, that would be awesome. Number four, that it's a badge of honor 
for people who don't support the president. The virus isn't a partisan issue. It affects Republicans, Democrats, independents. It affects everyone. I even saw a lady with a Trump 2020 mask, which was a choice, but I'm glad she's wearing a mask. Everyone, whether you hate the president or not, should be wearing a mask. I think saying that a mask is a badge of honor for those who hate the president is kind of silly. And masks aren't just an American thing. Many people in Southeast Asia will wear masks as a precaution just if they have like the common cold. Could you imagine how nice it would be if everyone kind of did that? Like, oh, I'm having, I'm feeling a little sick. Put a mask on and you don't spread those germs. That's so considerate, my God. Now, number five, trigger warning. This kind of talks about child abduction. Um, but another claim that a friend sent me is people think that uh, masks are a way to hide duct tape mouths on kids so they can kidnap them and traffic them in broad daylight. Now this is actually a very like sad, kind of scary claim and I think a lot of it is based on fear that many parents have. I'll leave a great article that debunks each and every one of these claims and goes into detail about the statistics of child trafficking. Experts have said that they've noticed there's no connection with kids wearing a mask in public and an increase in abductions or trafficking. And a kid being abducted in public, while terrifying and has happened, is very rare considering most of these trafficking issues happen inside the safety of people's own homes. But my number one takeaway that I got from this article is that um, it harms the National Human Trafficking Hotline because so many people are calling in about this fake conspiracy and it gunks up the phone lines from people who actually need attention, who are dealing with an issue right now. Number six, and I've heard this one a lot, the government is trying to control you. Now guys, it's a mask, it's a simple cloth. and. I know I've heard some people be like, well, first they make you wear a mask, then they'll make you do X, Y, and Z. But these people weren't questioning things like shirts and shoes. Shoes are my favorite one to talk about, not just because I like shoes, but also because they're very similar to masks. They're enforced because it keeps an area clean and free of diseases. That kind of works the same as a mask, only for your feet. Masks help keep our environment and the people in it sanitary and safe. They're just necessary during a pandemic. This isn't a forever thing. God, I hope not, my God. I mean, they're cute, but. I don't see how a simple cloth existing that has existed in many professions and many other countries, I don't see how that equates to the government controlling you. And just think for a second about some of the other regulations that the government has imposed for the safety of the people, like seat belts and car seats, life jackets on a boat. Masks are just another thing to keep ourselves and others safe, hygienic, and clean, just like shoes and shirts in a restaurant. And the last one, number seven, the coronavirus was started by the 5G network coming in. So this is such a wild conspiracy to me because viruses don't spread by 5G. Uh, they spread from person to person, from one animal to another animal. We've already shown that this particular virus spreads through the air. So no, the network, the 5G network that they're turning on isn't causing a virus. They're two completely separate sciences. 5G works in such a way where it's basically very short radio waves that cannot break up any tissue in your body, cannot break up chemical bonds, and it's not causing any radiation. So it's not related to viruses at all. And also, no, your phone is not spraying coronavirus droplets at you. I also saw that at some point. I have many questions. So I think it's just important to make sure we look out for ourselves check in on what we might be spreading as far as information goes, and to check in on our friends and family members and maybe offer resources and fact check for everyone. And mask up. For the question of the week, I want to know what is your favorite way to mask up? Do you like to do disposable masks or N95s? Or do you like to go with the cloth masks like I do? And if you have a really awesome mask that you just want to share, please tag us on our social media. We've got at Alan Coco Science Show on Instagram. We would love to check those out. And if you have any helpful tips on how you might have tried to get someone to wear a mask, leave it in the comments below. Let's 
share some stories and some ideas because wearing a mask is so important. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. See ya.